In this video, I'm going to show you how to build powerful automations that show you how to process data. Recently, I made a video that allowed you to store your chat GPT prompts referencing these variables inside your automations just like this. You can see here's the variable that we're using right here. Instead of embedding our prompts directly inside the automation itself, this makes updating your prompts a lot easier as you don't have to go back to the automation and update it manually here. And this is especially valuable when you use the same prompts in multiple automations. It's fairly easy to learn how to build out these automations that string together these different modules to complete a task. But eventually you're gonna to need to learn how to use one of these text parsers that can look at data from some source like a document to come up with ways of solving problems like I did here, where you can just add variable names to your prompts and import that data directly into the automation. Now there's a lot of different things that you can do with these parsers, but to make it work, you have to understand how to develop these regular expressions. Believe it or not, this regular expression is all that I needed to detect these variables and all of the text in between up and until the next variable. These regular expressions are very cool. You can do all sorts of things. You can match patterns. You can extract text just like I did here. But developing these regular expressions is pretty difficult and usually is done by advanced programmers. You have to understand what all of these individual characters do and it tends to just look like Greek. I've been writing these for years but I've never been really good at it because I don't do it often enough to become an expert. But now you can actually use ChatGPT to write these for you. You can simply cut and paste what they give you and drop it into your automations. And so in in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to think through the given problems, a way to make sure ChatGPT is giving you the right answer. And then we'll walk through several examples starting from a blank document and ChatGPT to build out some custom automations that you can use on your own. Now, I'm Stephen Pope, founder of The Content Engine. And over the past two years, I've helped hundreds of personal brands and content agencies automate and streamline their content systems overnight. All right, so now let's go ahead and show you how you would build out your own regular expression like this. We'll use this document as the first example, and then we'll go through a bunch of other examples. Here I'm in ChatGPT. I'm using the new 4.0 version, and I asked that I have a document that contains variables in the format variable name, and you can see here, this is the variable name that I chose to use. I use this particular format because it's unlikely to be used in a given prompt, which might confuse it with the next variable. And then I said that that variable name is followed by multiple lines of text until you hit the next variable. I need a regular expression that can extract the variable name and the text below it up until the next variable name. And then I said, here is a sample of text and pairs of variable names and text. Please provide a regular expression that can extract the variable name and multiple lines of text up until the next variable. So I probably could have been a little bit more clear and concise with ChatGPT, but I gave it the example, which I cut and pasted from the document. And then ChatGPT went to work and gave me this regular expression. So now you could cut and paste that expression directly into the automation except I find it's a little bit easier to use this website pythex.org to test the regular expression before I go into automations. So I'll come back to ChatGPT. I'm gonna copy the code. I'm gonna go back to the tester. I'm gonna drop in the regular expression here. And then I'm gonna test the string by copying the text from the document into the test string. So we can see here that it found two matches. It found the variable name and the text and then the next variable name and the text. So it looks like this regular expression is working. So we could simply come back to our automation and add it here. And I'll go over these other options here in the next example when we build something from scratch. Now, if you had gone ahead and tested this and you didn't get the results that you expected, you could come back to ChatGPT and you could simply tell it what was wrong and then it would try again. And then you could just jump back over here and iterate until it got the right answer. All you'd have to do is describe what it didn't accomplish and then it would try again. Now, if you're finding this video valuable, make sure to like and subscribe. It tells me what type of videos that you'd like to see more of. Now, let's go ahead and build out an automation from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead here and load up a Google Doc so we can send text to a text parser. I'm gonna type Google Docs. I'm gonna go show more. I'm gonna go ahead and get content from a document. If you don't already have a connection set up, you're gonna to need to add one to your Google Docs. And for the document ID, I'm gonna come over here to a blank document that I have. I'm gonna grab the ID from the URL here. Make sure to grab everything after the slash all the way up till the next slash. I'm gonna copy and then paste that directly here. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just run this module to see if it was able to find that document. It looks like a success. If I open this up, it was able to find the title demo document, but there's nothing in the document. So the text content is blank. Let's go back to the document. Let's go ahead and write test, come back to the automation. I'll go ahead and run it again one time manually, go look at the results. And now we've got test in the text content. So now let's go through an example where maybe we have a bunch of text. I'm just going to grab this text more as an example and come back to the document and drop it in here. But maybe we have a phone number mixed in with a bunch of text. And let's just say we want to extract this phone number that might 
might exist anywhere in this text. We don't know where it'll be, but we wanna be able to pull it out and then use it in our automation. So I'm gonna come back to ChatGPT and I'm gonna simply ask it that question. I have multiple lines of text that contains a phone number in the format. I need a regular expression that can parse all of the multi-line text and return that phone number to me. And then I'm also gonna ask it not to give me all this other information, I just simply want the regular expression. Please don't give me all the Python code, only the regular expression code. All right, so then it gives me this regular expression. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that code. I'm gonna come back to my tester. I'm gonna drop that test into the regular expression. I'm gonna take this test string out, select all, clear it out, come back to my demo document. Gonna select all this, copy, put it here in the test string. And here you see it was able to extract that string. So now we're good to go. We know that this string is going to work. If we jump back to our automation, I can come back to the next step and then I can add an additional module. I can type text parser. In this case, I'm gonna wanna match a pattern and then we can drop in our pattern here. So I'm gonna come back to ChatGPT. I'm gonna copy the code. I'm gonna do a paste. And now let's talk a little bit about these different settings here. If you have a global match, that means it's gonna try to find as many of the phone numbers as possible. We'll test that in just a second. And then for case sensitive, it's just asking whether or not it should be case sensitive or not. I'm gonna go ahead and pick no. Doesn't really matter in this case because I'm just picking numbers. These ones are a little bit harder to explain. I'll cover these other two options in another video. We don't need them now. This option here is just telling the automation whether the automation should continue if this string is not found. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as no. And then in this line here, we need to add in the text content that we find in step one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here. I'm gonna add the text content. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then I'm gonna come down here and run the automation. It's gonna give me a warning that this module shouldn't be the last operation in an automation, but I'm gonna go ahead and say run anyway. It loaded the contents of the document, then ran the text parser. If I open up the operation, looks like it sent in the the text, but it did not find the actual phone number. And the reason for that is because if you wanted to pull out a string, you need to put it in a parenthesis. That's telling the regular expression to pull it out as a variable. I'll make sure to save it. I'll come down here and run it again. Again, I'll ignore the warning. Then I'll look at the output and now you can see we have that variable. So the trick is just to make sure you wrap your entire pattern in a parenthesis so that it knows to extract that entire pattern. If we come back here to the test as well, as you'll see that it found the pattern, but it didn't actually match it as a variable. So if we put a parenthesis around this one as well, we'll see that it was actually able to extract it as a variable. So now let's go back to our example and put in multiple phone numbers. Put another phone number down here. Let's come back to the automation. If we run it this way as it is, I'm gonna go ahead and run anyway, ignore the warning, and we look at the output. Notice again, we only have one phone number, but if I were to come back into the automation and put global match, click okay, and then run this again. I'm, again, I'm gonna ignore the warning, and then we look at the output. We're now gonna see that it returned two different variables for each different phone number in the document. And just to test, we could name this 555 Five, five. Just to make sure that it's getting two different numbers, again, I'm gonna ignore the warning. I'll go ahead and look at the output, and now we can see here that we've got two different phone numbers being extracted with the text parser. So now let's go ahead and do another example. Let's say we have a bunch of text and we want to extract an email address. I'm gonna come back to ChatGPT. I'll say, okay, given the same type of text, help me extract an email address. Then it's gonna go ahead and give me the regular expression for that. I'll go ahead and copy the code. I'll bring that over to my tester. I'm gonna drop that in here. Then I'm gonna come back to my document. I'm gonna grab this code, copy, come to the tester, select all, replace. Now you see it's able to find that email address, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the parentheses so that it will actually extract that email. Then I'm gonna copy this. Then I'm gonna come back over to make and I'm gonna copy this into the text parser. I'll drop this here into the pattern. I've already added the parentheses in this case, so we won't run into the issue we ran into last time. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. I'm gonna go ahead and run this again, run anyway. Let's go ahead and see the output and now we have that email address. So now let's try something else. Let's try detecting a certain type of file name. I'm gonna change this here to testfile.mp4. Let's say there's a situation where we need to verify a file name is of the correct format. We're going to extract it. Now in this case, if we're trying to detect whether a file name is of the right format, it might not make sense to have it within this text here, but let's just go ahead and use this as an example. In this case, I'm gonna come up to ChatGPT and I'm gonna ask it, what are all the file extensions for video content. 
So then it's gonna give me all of the different extensions for video content. And then I'm gonna say, okay, given all those formats, give me a regular expression that can extract a video file name from text like we used previously in other regular expression examples. So then it's gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see here, it wrote that regular expression so that it can detect all of these different file names. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the code. I'm gonna run up to my tester here. I'm gonna drop this here. Rather than going back to the document here, I'm just gonna simply update this test.mp4. All right, we can see that it was able to match that. Now in this case here, it found the entire file name, but the match was only the mp4. And that's because the parentheses are simply on the extension. So if we wrap this whole thing in the parentheses, then it will grab the whole file name. There we go. Now let's go ahead and tweak this a little bit. Let's take off the four. It's no longer matching. Let's move it to mov. Now it's working again. If we put in a space here, it should break, move the space. I'm gonna add something to the end of G. Now this is pretty interesting. It was still able to find the file name, even though I tacked on a G, which you might not really want because this is showing us that the file extension is really MOVG. So you could come back to ChatGPT and you could ask it, make sure there's a space after the last letter of the file extension. Make sure there is a space after the last character of the file extension. So then it's gonna go ahead and make sure that there's a space after the extension. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the code, bring this back up to the tester. I'll replace this here. Again, I'll put the parentheses for the whole thing. And now you're gonna see that it's no longer matching. If I remove the G, then it will now be responding. So you can use this tester here to really make sure that you test all of the different cases that might happen so that you don't run into a situation where it's actually matching a G when it probably shouldn't. So of course you could come through here and test these other extensions as well, but we're gonna go ahead and assume that this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, take it back to our automation, replace the expression here, paste that in. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna jump back to our demo document. We already have the global on, so I'm gonna place this in a couple different places. Test file one, test file two, and test file three, and this one will be an MOV. Let's come back to the automation. Let's go ahead and run this automation here. Again, we'll ignore the warning and run anyway. Let's take a look at the output. What do we got? All right, so we have three different tests testfile.mp4, testfile2.mp4, and testfile3.mov. And notice as well as it's extracting the extension by itself as well. And that is because if we come to the regular expression, you'll see that there is also parentheses around the file name extension. So it's really extracting two strings for us, the entire thing end to end because we have parentheses there, and then also the parentheses just on the extension. So now that we have this working, we could go ahead and add additional modules to our automation. In this case, I'm just gonna grab something random here. I'm gonna go ahead and set a variable and I'm gonna name the variable from something related to step number two. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this variable here, I. And then for the variable value, I'm gonna go ahead and pick first match of the text parser, which was the entire file name. I'll go ahead and click okay. In this case, I'm just picking something random here. I just wanna show you how you can go ahead and use these variables from the previous step. I'm gonna go ahead and run the automation and we'll see that it ran successfully. Now, one thing I do wanna mention here is that notice that this ran three different times and these two only ran one time. Now this is a function of how make.com operates. When a particular module returns multiple outputs, in this case there were three different bundles, then anything after that particular module is going to run as many times as that operation had. Then the next module is going to loop through as many variables that came out from the output of the previous step. And that's why you see it running three times. So if we look at the individual operations of this particular module, we're gonna see it ran three different times and we can look inside each one. We have variable name one, variable value, test file dot MP4, operation two, variable name two. And so if we look into this variable here, remember we used I, which was this variable here, which is really just giving us an iterator for each of the different bundles so we can identify it. We have one, two, and three. So again, if we come to the output and we look at these operations two, we have operation two, test file 2.mp4. If we go to our demo document, we have test file 2.mp4. And then in this last operation, we're gonna see variable name three with test file 3.mov, which is the third iteration, test file 3.mov. Now, if you wanna watch another amazing automation video where I show you how to use these chat GPT prompts with the variables and build out the entire automation that I showed you here, which allows you to embed those variable names inside of your automations, 
just like this, where you can add the variable names is simply by clicking on these variables. Make sure to check out the next video that's popping up on your screen. I go step by step on how to build out this automation where it loads in this Google Doc and then parses that value and then creates all of those different variables that you can paste into your automations just like this. I'll see you there.